I'm just kidding. That would keep me six minutes under what I'm supposed to do. All right. Um, so before I got here, um, I was at Spirit Life, and it was an amazing opportunity there. I have a lot of good memories from there. One of my favorite memories is when on Sunday morning, they had a bus going out, and they were picking up all of these kids. At least that's who was intended to come with children. But it didn't really work out that way. Instead of children getting on the bus for uh, Sunday morning children's church, it was a whole bunch of teenagers getting on that bus. And at that point, we didn't have a youth ministry going on on Sunday mornings. It was really just for Wednesday nights. And, and for probably about two months, I looked at those teenagers, and I'm like, why can't y'all just sit down? Why can't y'all behave? I'm supposed to be doing live stream and making sure that everything sounds good online for our five viewers. It was more than that, but some weeks it felt like it was only five. And I, I, I was so preoccupied with other stuff, and, and I was just looking at all these teenagers just doing these crazy things. I remember one week they had dumped a whole bunch of soap and hand sanitizer all over the bathroom floors. And the worst part is an older gentleman who was, I don't know how old he is. He, he's ancient. He had to go in there and clean it up. And, and I felt so bad. And I'm like, I just do not like these teenagers. I don't like them. I don't love them. I don't want them here. I just, just stop running that bus. Make an age limit. Something. But then one week... Um, one week, I was sitting there, I was looking at them, they were all talking, I'm like, you know what, this is a distraction, let me just take them out of this room and go into the youth room with them. So I, I walked over to them, I'm like, come on, let's go. And they're like, oh no, we're in trouble, Kevin's going to go to us, he's going to send us home, he's going to tell Ben, they're not going to let us get on the bus again, and I'm like, no, let's, let's sit down. I just pulled out my lesson from that Wednesday, and I just sat with them, and that lesson... If y'all think I'm bad up here, it was bad then. It, it was so quick. It was so distracting. They were just talking the whole time. And I'm like, all right, this isn't going to work. Let me, let me build a relationship with these people, with these teenagers. They, they, they don't know, so how can I expect them to sit down if they just don't know to do it? So I sat down with them. I prayed with them. We, we turned it into more of just a discussion-based learning and what I didn't know was it would be a lot more difficult, but still preparation for when I got to Fairlawn. Because when I first got here, some of these teenagers were very, very rough. I, 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 I'm willing to go out on a limb here and say they weren't necessarily the crowd favorite at first. Um, but you know what? Those teenagers are amazing. And... And I love these teenagers. When, when we first got here, I, I remember there was like three or four of them. And a lot of times they were walking out of the room and just, and just not paying attention. One week we showed up. I'm all excited because we just got our logo. We got some music playing. We finally got a TV hanging up on the wall. And I had, I, it had looked like a youth room. And I was so excited. We had the lights dimmed. It was great. And you know how many teenagers showed up that week? Zero. <laughs> it, it was awesome. It was awesome. So I, back to those teenagers that rode the bus. Um, like I said earlier, I, I really just had a hard time loving them at first. I think we've all been in that situation where we've had a hard time loving somebody, don't you think? It could be a group of people, it could be an individual, it could be a family member. How many of you have ever felt like it was just hard to love someone? You look at them and you want to walk the other way. In fact, I, I know that's how our, our, our media team feels about me, because when I went to the back, they had a beautiful slide for me. Let's go ahead and put that up there. Kevin Talby, disgraced youth pastor. They just don't love me. But it's all right. I love them. Love you, John. 
So <laughs> I thought that was funny when I saw it, and I just remembered when I looked up at the screen. I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't ask them to put it up there. <laughs> so anyways, I feel like we've all been at a point where we just really had a hard time loving somebody. How many of you can agree with that? It could be a family member. It could be a church member. It could be a rowdy youth group. It could be the youth pastor. It could be, it could be Pastor Jimmy. Thank God for Pastor Mark keeping him in line all the time. I expect that five bucks later. We, we've, we have a hard time loving people sometimes. Um, if you have your Bibles, um, go ahead and go to Matthew 22, verse 37 through 39. I don't have it on the Sky Bible, unfortunately. I, was, I, I really wasn't sure if I was even going to do a long message or not, or if I was just going to say thank you or not. So that's why I didn't ask him to do it. But it's all right. Keeps it interesting. All right. So Matthew 22, verse 37 through 39, it says, And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the laws of the prophet. So law number one and law number two is about love. First, most important law, love God. So how do we love God? We, can, we love God with our heart. We love God with our soul. And we love God with our mind. And I'm a minute over, so I'm going to go quick now. Trust me, I don't mind. Um, loving God with our heart means that, that we should have deep worship for him. One of my favorite lessons I did with the youth group was a lesson on worship. And I, I wish I could say it was the first time I did that lesson was with uh, the youth group here, but it was a ripoff of another one that I did uh, about a year before, but it's okay. But in that message... I was talking about how worshiping God is about showing respect and showing honor and giving God thanks for everything that he has done, everything he will do, and everything that he is doing right now in this moment. And when we worship, that's what we're doing. We're, we're taking time and we're saying, God, we love you. Thank you for everything that you have done. That is the essence of worship right there. Loving God with our soul means getting in and praying. And we can pray while we worship and And prayer just gets us closer to God. For you teenagers that are looking at dating now, um, prayer is similar to is similar to dating. Really, you're asking questions, you're talking, and it's the same with scripture. With scripture, you're getting to know Jesus just like you're getting to know that boy or girl that you're going out with. Like, really focus on your relationship with God, like you would on a boy and a girl. And I'm telling you, your relationship is going to go a lot further with God. And the best part is, He won't leave you. I know how those middle school relationships went. My longest middle school relationship was three days. So the next part of that was loving people. How do we love people? I, I, I was thinking, of how can we love people? And I, I went back to thinking about the youth group and how it kind of just started. And really, there's, there's three main things, well, four main things, I guess, that I had to do. The first thing was I had to identify that I had a problem loving those teenagers, right? As difficult as it was to admit, I had a hard time loving somebody. And at that point, my whole identity was wrapped up with being one of the most loving people that people ever meet. Like, I was that guy that would walk up to a teenager after meeting them for one one day and be like, all right, love you. Like, that was just me. But I did not love those teenagers. I really didn't. And it sounds terrible, it sounds funny, but that's the truth. I had zero love for them at first. So the first thing you have to do is identify that there's a problem. And when you identify that there's a problem, then you can start working towards some solutions. And with this loving problem that I had, the first thing that I had to do was, after I identified it, was pray for them, right? I had to get to the point where I would think about them over myself and Say, you know what, instead of praying for myself, let me go ahead and pray for these teenagers. God, I pray that you would just bless these teenagers. I pray that you would strengthen them up. I pray that you would soften their hearts and give them 
that curiosity to learn about you. That's how it had to start. Next, I had to show them love in my actions. That was harder than praying, because I could say a prayer and not have to look at them. But showing them kindness when they had been disrespectful, when they hadn't been the best teenagers ever, like all teenagers are so wonderful, but these weren't. Yep. I had to show them kindness. And I had to sit there and I had to be like, you know what? I don't care that you're disrespectful. I don't care that you draw attention to yourself and draw attention away from what's going on in the church. Let me go ahead and sit there and show you some kindness, get to know you, because until I build that relationship with you, I know that you're not even going to care about what God has to do for you. And then I also had to seek some reconciliation with those teenagers. You see, I wasn't the nicest to those teenagers. I kind of looked at them like a nuisance, and they could sense it. And I had to apologize. I had to make things right between us. And for those few weeks that we had those Sunday morning youth services, the amount of change that went on with those teenagers was absolutely incredible. It was like something had switched. Instead of being repelled from church and only showing up for a free meal and to dump hand sanitizer and soap all over the bathroom floors, they were showing up to learn about God. And it was incredible seeing that. They, they had turned their lives around, and they were talking to me about how they were reading the Bible at home for a few minutes, but they didn't really know what it meant, so they would ask me questions about it. And there was a couple times where that lesson had turned from, let me teach you about the Ten Commandments to, all right, what questions do you have about the Bible? What did you read? Oh, you don't know how to pray? Let's go ahead and pray. It, it, was, it was really awesome. But it started with identifying the problem. Then it went to showing them kindness. Then it went to reconciliation and praying for them. And you see, that's what we have to do with our relationships with the people that we don't like. As difficult as it is, start by praying for them. Then show them kindness. Reconcile any sort of bridges that might have been burnt. Ask God to reconcile those relationships. And here, here's why we want to do it. First, it tears down any sort of divisions. We're, we're, a, we're a family here at this church. But I, I'm willing to go out on a limb here and say that we got some family members outside of this church that need to come into this church or into a church and get closer to God. And the best way of doing that is dividing that barrier, dividing that, getting rid of that divide that keeps us apart. So when we do this, divisions are going to be torn. People are going to witness the love of God through your actions because most of the time, People aren't going to witness the love of God from other people. It has to start with you. You have to be the ones to show them the love of God. You have to be the ones to show them, hey, there is a heavenly father that loves you, and let me point out every single example of this in your life. And when you do it, you become a magnet for Jesus, and you're going to draw people in. And it's not going to be necessarily from you preaching and telling them, hey, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It might not look like that. It might just look like, hey, I'm a Christian, and I'm here, and I'm willing to listen to you about anything, and it doesn't even have to be God-related, but I'm here, and I'm willing to walk this thing out with you. And that's how you become a magnet for Jesus. That's how you show love to people. And that is something that Fairlawn family is so incredible at. When, when I was first, first came in, I felt so loved. I felt so welcome. I felt drawn in because you all have that down. You make people feel welcomed. Amen. And I want to say thank you for that. And I want to encourage you all to keep continuing to do that because what this church has is absolutely incredible, and it's not something that's found at every single church. And then I want to encourage you to take it to another level. Don't be content with just this. Keep it going. Watch it snowball and what, watch what God is going to do in this church. I can't wait to see what God does. And I believe that God is going to have great things for this church. And it starts with each and every single one of you sitting down. 
So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I'm not very long at all. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for letting us be able to come here today. God, I pray that you would just bless each and every single one of these people here, Lord. I pray that they would become a magnet for you, Lord God, that they would draw people in, not necessarily through the words that they say, but the actions that they have. God, I pray that any sort of divisions that were built would be torn down, Lord God. I pray that this church would be a magnet for the community and would say, hey, we don't care where you are at, and we don't care where you're going to go. We want to be here through the process with you. And Father God, I pray that you would just bless each and every single one of these people here, Lord God. Bless these teenagers, Lord. God, I pray that they would just continue to develop their relationship with you, Lord. And I pray that they would grow and spiritually, and I pray that the youth group would grow numerically too, and just show off what you can do, God. In your name I pray, amen.